Hello, pen people, and welcome to my channel. This is my very first video, and the first video in a series I'm going to call Ink Outside the Box, where I will be looking in depth at a fountain pen ink. Today, we're going to look at Abandoned Shipyard by Birmingham Pen Company. This video is going to be a little bit longer than future installments of Ink Outside the Box because I'm going to go over the process I use when testing a new ink. With all that being said, let's get started. I'm going to be sampling this today and I thought it would be a good idea to go over how I like to sample ink. So the first thing that I do, and I try to do this the night before so it, it has time to dry, is I do chromatography paper sample of the ink. You can kind of see that up here a little bit, even though it's coming across as more blue. But it's also got this pink and this brown color here. So I'm kind of excited about it just to see what happens with it. Once the chromatography paper is done, then the next thing that I do is an ink blot. Then I will fill out a sheet that covers all the samples that I got at the same time. And as you can see, I've already tested one Birmingham Pen Company ink here, the Tea Berry Ice Cream. Then what I will do while those are drying is I will fill out a Rolodex card. And these cards for me are just the plain Rolodex card, get in a pack from Office Depot, they're cheap, they're thin, but then they go into a Rolodex of colors. And I like to have this small, easy to grab reference. And I just have these on some planner discs and they stay on there pretty well. I mean, I like the portability of this. That's what I like that I could take this traveling and see what I already have. And I can pull these cards out and lay them around. So, so I fill this out in a specific way. Then I fill out this larger card, which has more information on it. Then on the back, I like to write on these small samples of paper. These represent the types of paper I'm most likely to use with inks in general. This is a Tomoe River paper. This is the 52, the discontinued one. Then this is just uh, some Rhodia dot grid paper. Then there's the, this is from just cut out of like a traveler's notebook that I didn't fill out. The primary purpose of this is just to see what the ink looks like on a cream colored paper because some inks look amazing on cream colored papers and some really just lose all their personality. So I like to see how they look on that. And then this is a Kakuyo business paper. This is what I do. I would say 90% of my writing on. It's what I print my planner sheets on. So this is the one I'm most interested in seeing how the ink works. If it's causing a lot of problems, then I know that's probably not going to be a great ink for me to use. So that's the one I'm most interested in. But what I'll do is I'll fill out the same information on each. I'll paste these on the back and I paste the chromatography strip back there, though I only just started doing that. So I have kind of a lot of back filling to do. And then once I have those, put them into here. So far, I have two of these. I have my shimmer inks split out because they make a mess and they put shimmer on things that don't have shimmer, like this troublemaker, which is not shimmery, but shows some shimmer. But this is a recent one I did. So the chromatography paper is on there. The water test is on there. And I just fill these out. These are printed on some mixed media paper. I like these. They give me more information. You can kind of see how they perform. 
but I use primarily flex pens for this because that's what I primarily use in my life. So I have this Jinhao, I think it's an X750 that I like because it's sparkly. And I just have a Flex Fountain Pen Revolution nib in it. And I just dip test everything. And it works out fine. It cleans out pretty easily. So the first thing that I want to do is a splotch test. The why I like to do this is I do like to see what bigger concentration of ink looks like compared to the lighter, if there's any additional colors in there. And it's really the best way to see sheening inks in particular because the smaller swatches that I do on the other don't always show the sheen um, like this does. These are disposable pipettes, but I don't dispose them unless they're irredeemably dirty. And I just do one drop of ink. I like this glass round mini candle top because you can see through it. So that way I can just put it right on top and start just in a circle. And then this is very easy to clean off because it's glass. I usually spray a little alcohol on there too, just to make sure it's not going to contaminate whatever I do next. So then I let this dry. And once it's dry, I'll write the name. But I do like a lot of the samples I've seen of this online have read a lot grayer to me. And it's not dry yet, but it definitely has a lot more green in it. And I do not have a lot of good greens, so that's kind of exciting. So then the next thing I like to do is just a little writing sample on, this is the Kakuyo business paper again. my lovely back of the mixed media paper cardboard so I can make a mess. I fill all of these little sample sheets out the same way with the same word and the same information. I like using the same word so I can just write the same thing. And that word is lemon. Why lemon? I don't know. I like writing big L's. I like the loops of the M. This is the Tomoe River paper sample first. I usually do a little silly thing there. Then like a solid square. And a little spiral and some lines. Yeah, nice shading. And then sometimes I fix up my messes. And I do the same thing on a four. This is the Rhodia paper here. This is one of the inks that I would probably rather 
on like a cream color paper. I just think that the green looks so nice. Not against like a stark white. It's just really complimentary. Shows up a lot darker there. Pen was drier here too though. Probably should have filled it before I started, but, or dipped it, I should say. It's definitely not dry. Yeah, I like that on the cream of white paper. And this is the Kakuyo. Okay, so that's the sample papers and I let them dry. The only additional thing I'll do here is I'll do like a dot with the Q-tip in this section. I do figure eights up here. And the ink company here. And sometimes I do a good job centering and other times not so much. Then the ink color here. More wonderful centering on my part. Then I just do some line tests here. And another heart up here. And then I do a line. Then more doodles. Because why not? I think ink is like the ones that you respond to. Sometimes it's not even really the color. I mean, I guess it is, but it's the feeling. So some of these doodles are just, they're less informational and more a feeling. And then up here, I write the pen I used and the nib. I usually put that it was dipped. And then where I got the ink from, this was a Reddit sample, March 24. And that's all I do until I'll go back in with a swab and do a big swab here, bottom, and some just dots there. Then I fill out this card. I will say that as I'm seeing these dry, and especially on this card, it is looking much more gray, which is interesting because it still looks very green on the cream colored paper and a little on this, less on that. I would say this has shading. I would say this is wetter. I would say the saturation is kind of medium, and in that case, I just sort of circle both. I don't know how waterproof it is yet, so I'm gonna wait to fill that out. These, I need to change. I mean, there's not that many inks that dry in 20 seconds. So I probably need to increase those, or I might do like a bar, but I've already done so many speed through this part. Especially in a flex pen, I already am of the mind that things are just going to take an eternity to dry. With a flex pen, something that actually does dry in 20 seconds would be interesting to me because so few inks actually do, but I need to change that. But not today.
then this is where I've decided to do a water resistance test. And in the rest of the notes section, I want to write something that gives me more than just a word, like a little writing sample. And what I've generally done with this is looked up some interesting fact about something related to the name of the ink. So. I decided to write about ship graveyards and I read a little bit about it and it's pretty interesting. Something I didn't know before. I mean, I like, I like it when the name of the ink causes me to learn something new. <laughs> I also write the pen. I use and the nib that brand that I could abbreviate, but I like to write, so I don't. So that's where the name goes. And then color is my impression of the color. And on some of these, it gets hard because this is green, but it's also gray. Green, leaning, gray. That's my opinion. All right, and purchased from Reddit samples, March 24. Then I Color in these lines, color in these lines, color in these lines. I usually clean this pen out because I'm done with the writing bit, but that's boring. So we'll do that a little later. Clean my hand too. All right. So now these are done once they're dry and these I will put an additional two layers here and in this place. So I will come back after this is dried and add that. All right, we're back to this here and we are dry on these. Put them up this way. And then I usually paper clip them together to keep them from getting scattered about that because these are done and these are dry enough that I will put the second layer on the card. So I'll go ahead and show you where I put those. And that just helps me see how saturated it is. So I will put two layers here. It's interesting about this too, is when you put these on, you can better see the transition that it goes through. Cause this is definitely when it's this wet forest green and it definitely dries a lot more muted. And then on here, I will do a second layer of ink about two thirds the way down. And it's about this time too that I will do the water test. I'll put the water on for that. And I usually just do uh, about three or four drops of water and just let that sit for a while until 
the second layer is dry and then I will remove this water. We are dry enough for the third layer and this is when I will deal with this water test and it is clearly not super water resistant. I will do one more layer of ink just on the top of the bottle, the cap. And then about a third of the way down on this. And that's what I do to test and document a new ink. So final thoughts. I like it. It's a, it's a nice thing. It's got a good flow. It does not seem to feather or railroad or skip in flex pens, which is a bonus for me. I don't have a lot of inks, but the closest example or closest shade that I have to the abandoned shipyard is the Jehorban Vert Empire. And they're very similar. The abandoned shipyard definitely has more of like a yellow undertone to it, but the saturation level and the tone are similar. They definitely feel similar. The problem with this one, though, is I do get some feathering on some paper. And I, th I think the abandoned shipyard has a little bit nicer shading on. If you can see in this M, there's just some nice shading there. And I really, really like how it looks on an off-white paper. If I were using this color of paper more, I would be interested in a bottle of this. Overall though, it's really nice. It's a nice ink. I'm glad I got to try it. Thanks you guys so much for stopping by and I hope I get to see you guys again. Bye.